Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Nathan Liao here. The website is watchmanscry.com. And I am coming to you, Nathan Liao, and this is Allison Liao. Allison, say hello to the audience. And I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to what we have to say and to watch this channel. Now, in this video, I'm going to share some things that are going to be shocking to some of you. Some of you might not even know that this is going on. But I have to do it. And the reason I'm doing this is because the Bible says expose the deeds of darkness. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a spiritual battle. The movement that is happening in the church right this very minute, and it's, it's in the American church, the pollution that has come in to the church is dividing families. It's dividing relationships to the point where, oh, you don't agree politically with what I agree with? I don't want to have dinner with you ever again. Don't call me. Unfriend me. I'm going to block you. It's been horrible. But Jesus told us that was going to happen, folks. He said, within the house, hold. Yeah, father against son or son against father. I didn't come to bring peace, but... To bring the sword. And Jesus said that. And so that's where we are, ladies and gentlemen. But here's the deal. We have to make sure that we are on the correct side of this matter. We have to make sure that we are holding on to the scriptures in a way and in the manner that will find approval from God, from Jesus. Because if you're a Christian, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is giving us, he gave us the warning in the Bible, but he's given us the opportunity now to prove what we believe and to prove if we actually yeah. know the Bible, Allison. Exactly. So on this program, I'm going to share with you where we're going, the situation that we're in right now, and the way to win, the way to overcome. There needs to be a strategy in the church to overcome, ladies and gentlemen. If we don't get a hold of that strategy, biblically, overcoming will not happen. Because the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 13, yeah. almost at the very end of that chapter, it talks about the enemy was given permission to make war mm -hmm. with you, my friend. And it says, and to overcome them. In the previous chapter, it says that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. So we have those who overcame mm -hmm. and those who didn't. What's the difference? Well, the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, they didn't love their lives even unto death, meaning they weren't trying to save something temporary yes. on this earth. The ones who overcame were not attached to the kingdoms of this world because they knew their names were written in heaven. The ones who didn't overcome in chapter 13, they got immersed. in. Yeah. They wanted to preserve things that are going to pass away anyway. They're going to perish. Yeah. So... Ladies and gentlemen, there's a variety of reasons that this thing has taken place and we need to identify them and we need to find out where we stand. Every one of you that are watching this needs to examine yourself, to look in the mirror and to evaluate and place on the table your principles and what you're following and to what level of intensity and commitment you are following those things. Are they political ideals that override spiritual? Or has the spiritual become entangled mm -hmm. with the politics? Allison, does that happen? Do, do human beings allow politics and, and, and religion to get mixed in? Oh, all the time. Does it? Yeah. You know, we, we've heard that statement on Thanksgiving. Don't talk about what? Religion and politics. <laughs> and why do people say that? <laughs> because it causes dissension. Or it causes arguments. And since the dawn of time, politics and religion has been the cause of most wars. It's either one of those. Yeah. Holy wars, radical wars, the Inquisition. Yeah. I mean, we can go on and on. Ideologies. Ideologies yeah. for politics or religion. And in the end of time, ladies and gentlemen, Revelation 13 tells us, and see, Allison, this is what's so important for the for the folks to get a hold of. We need to look at the, the signs and the prophecies that Jesus gave us. Read, heed, keep the words of this prophecy. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to know the cast of characters and know what they're going to do because it's happening right now. Those cast of characters are in real time right now and they're playing a role right now in this world. And the cast of characters are the beast will rise up. Chapter, chapter 13, verse 1, it rose from the sea, mm -hmm. took over the whole world. It was politics. Yeah. But then further down, it says a second beast rose up and it had the horns of a lamb, but it spoke like the 
Dragon. Like the dragon. Ladies and gentlemen, the second beast is a false church. Allison, the thing that's confusing, Christians have, have read these Bible prophecy books and they have them from 10, 20 years ago and they were told what that false church would be. They were told it was the Roman Catholic Church, yeah. period. And the Roman Catholic Church is going to lead people astray with the Pope. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's visit that for a moment. If that does, the second beast represents the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope, and the Pope's a false prophet. Think about this, Allison. And last in the last program, we talked about how we explained that many will come in my name saying that I'm the Christ and deceive many. And it wasn't talking about people saying, I'm Jesus, follow me. It didn't. No. It was about in the church. Being anointed, professing to be anointed, being a Christian. Exactly. Follow of Christ and deceiving. Right. So folks have said, preachers have said, it's the Pope. So are we to believe, you know, I, and this is what I've always pictured. I pictured the, the Pope walking behind the Antichrist with his little incense sensor and it's hanging on yeah. a chain. There's smoke coming out and he's going, ooh. You're getting sleepy, you know? Yeah. And he's hypnotizing the whole church body, and they're going, oh, okay, I'll take the mark. Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what most people think, though. Like, Folks, that that is, first of all, that's through hypnotism and force, and it means that the people don't get to choose. We get to choose, ladies and gentlemen. We get to choose and use what we have as our guide, which is the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. the Comforter, the Voice of God, the Holy Spirit, and the Word. Those two things are our guide. And, the, and it says in Revelation that the second beast would rise up and, and speak like Satan. Speak like a dragon. Yeah. Are there other references that tell us what sorts of words that Satan would use in the scripture? Yes, there are. And we're going to touch those, ladies and gentlemen. Allison and I are going to share that from the Bible. By the way, um, Allison, you got some emails yeah. about our version of the Bible. Yeah. And you see, in the last program, I read from the New King James. Allison was reading for, from the... New Living Translation. And we did that so that the, the, the man on the street could just understand what we were saying. And then I also said this. I said, look at it in your Bible. But the meaning is still the same. And then we got emails from people who said, the only Bible that you should be using is the King James. But King James. ladies and gentlemen, let me just place something on the table just to stop that madness. Stop it. Allison's from Germany. Yeah. What what language do they speak in Germany? German. What what language is the Bible in in Germany? German. Is it the King James? No. Okay. Poland, do they have a Bible? Yes. Is it King James? No. Do you know Polish people with the Bible? Of course I do. And they're Tell me some of the versions you've seen in Europe. And in, in people who love the Lord, what versions do they use? Are they King James and tell me which one they're using? No, they use the versions that they understand the best in their language. And in, the, in Germany, you have oh, oh, 10, 20 different versions of the Bible. There's the one that Martin Luther... Who? Uh, Martin Luther translated. Martin Luther translated? Martin Luther translated into the what? Bible into German. Not into English? No, into German. Okay, so when people say the King James is the only one, Martin Luther, the trailblazer of the Protestant movement, yeah. rewrote the Bible, or, or he, he translated it... Into German. In Ge Ladies and gentlemen... Stop it with the King James only. The Bible and all those versions, what did they what were they translating from? The canonized Greek text and the Hebrew, some Aramaic for Daniel, but these are canonized versions that have passed the test of time that are very accurate. So when you're looking at the Bible and I quote a, a, a scripture, bring it up in blue letter or whatever version of computerized version you have and look at the meaning of each word in the originals. That's how we get to truth. Do a word study. And that's what we do. That's what we do. We, we open do. it up and, and we look word by word. What word does that word, word mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Look at the original. And and if we are, by the way, limited to King James only, we're not going to see what the actual Greek meant often. Because the King James isn't always right either. <laughs> so, folks, you know, this is one of those things, uh, Allison, you said it the other day that, about the camel and the... Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> straining the... straining out gnats and swallowing camels. That's what's going on. So, folks, we're not going to go down that road, okay? Because it's absurd. The, who, which nation in the planet has the most Christians? Allison, which nation? Of course, the one with the most people. China. And there's, they say 200 million Christians. Yeah. Do they use King James? Nope. Surprise, surprise, folks. So they're all deluded. They don't know the truth.
right? We should write them yeah. and school them. Yeah. What are you using Chinese? You can't do that. It's the King James only. What are the Arab Jews? Are there Arab Christians? Of course they're Arab Christians. A lot of Arab Christians. The Lebanese? They're Christian yeah, nation, the right? Yeah, the Arabs were among the first, some of them, that, you know. Syrian Christians? What do they use? King James? Probably not. <laughs> you have one. I, I, I see that our shelf is right around the corner. Right? Yes. Allison has I a have, German I have, Bible. I have five different versions in German. Allison, grab one. Let's just okay, put it right let's in front. Let's see. So, ladies and gentlemen, this King James only thing, we can do a whole program on it. Maybe we will in the future on how to do a word study using the computer software. Blue Letter Bible can do it, or you can download one to find the original words to follow. So, uh, so here's one. This is a very well-read one of mine. What is that? It's uh, just the, the Hada Übersetzung. And... Um, then I have, it's a very famous one, a lot of people like this one, it's the Elberfelder Bibel. Then I have a regular uh, one from Martin Luther. You have the Martin Luther one? I have a Martin Luther one. So this is really cool. Look at that. You open the, you open it up, look what it says. Die Bibel. <laughs> die Bibel. Not die? No, die. Die Bibel. Die. The Old and the New Testament? The Old and the New Testament. Can you see that? Oh, there it is right there. Yeah. Okay. So, I even uh, have a Turkish version. You have a Turkish? I have a Turkish Bible. And they're all translated from the canonized yeah. Greek text. Yeah. All of them. All of them. And they all say that. They all say that. So, <laughs> folks, come on. God is bigger, and the words that we share are bigger. The gospel can be translated into hundreds of languages, and it's been, not just King James. So when we're sharing truth and the, rightly dividing the word of truth, we do share some passages and the passages that we read today and when you hear me quote some write them down and look them up yourself and then look at the original meanings to really make a word study for yourself right folks but we're also going to do something else and i want to give a rundown of why we're in this mess there are several reasons why a part of it is that the patriots oh there it is if you're listening on headphones the train's loud our train <laughs> If you're not on headphones, you can't hear it, so I'm just keep on going. All right. So there's several reasons we're in this mess. One of it is the clerics of politics, the patriots, mm -hmm. are digging in their heels, and they want to fight. They're ready for a fight, and they want a holy war against the evil Democrats mm -hmm. to set things straight. So they want to preserve the union, preserve the republic, get us back to all of the goodness that we have in our recollections you know the uh fictional narrative that we've been given about america and mm -hmm. how holy it is because america's number one in in heaven and jesus is american is an american american he speaks english he speaks english so uh that's part of the reason patriotism the spirit of patriotism which the beasts will do they will worship the beast and when the beast rises up ladies and gentlemen it, it tells us in revelation Ten horns. Seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads represents the seven continents of the world, meaning it's worldwide. And the set, the ten horns is the, the earth will be divided into ten regions. But all of them will be gung-ho for whatever this new system is. They will love it. So if the United States is a part of this end-time world, then that tells us that the members of the United States are going to be gung-ho for the situation in America, the governmental setup. Mm -hmm. So right now, half of the country is not happy with the governmental setup. Mm -hmm. They're not. Which tells us that at some point, they will get happy. They will become happy for the setup that's coming to America. At the moment, Biden and Harris are in there. That's not going to stay like that. Based on what they're saying, based on the hints, based on the chatter of the patriots and the uh, this Christian remnant group that is going to set America free, mm -hmm. that still believes Donald Trump's coming back. They say some changes are coming, and we're going to be talking about those changes as well, ladies and gentlemen. And if we do see those changes come forth like they're talking, then right now I would say it's 1930-something, Allison. And the Nazi Party is getting ready. Actually, the Nazi Party, there was a, an attempt in the early 20s by Hitler and yeah. the Nazis 
didn't work. Hitler went to prison. And then Hitler got out of prison. He wrote his book and all that. But the Nazi movement was getting stronger and stronger. So that by the time Hitler showed up in the election for 32, he won. He became the chancellor. 33, he gave his speech. He said, give us time to turn everything around. And, and jobs are coming back. Give us four or six years or something. And he did it. Yeah. So we're somewhere in that timeline right now. And we're headed that way, folks. We are headed to an authoritarian United States of America. And at the helm, if it happens like they want it to happen, we're going to see Donald Trump either come back. Yeah. He's going to return, Allison, or... His son might even step up. Who knows? Allison... Donald Jr. is already hinting at it. He, he, he threw up a trial balloon. Yeah. And who did he use? What movie did he use as an example? The Lion King. Don Jr. <laughs> made a meme. And I don't want to digress, Allison, but I just want the folks knowing this thing's not going away. Don Jr. said, Hey, everybody, do you remember how in The Lion King where Mufasa, Simba's dad, the, the king, mm -hmm. was killed by his brother, Scar, the evil uncle of Simba, mm -hmm. and he was thrown off the cliff, and mm -hmm. the land was overridden with hyenas. Yeah. Famine came. Do you remember that? Well, just saying. Do you remember? And then that was his meme. Yeah. What did that mean? Oh, well, he's hinting that he's going to return and. And who's he? Who does he? Who is he? That then? he's the Lion King. That he's. He's Simba. Simba. And his dad, Mufasa, is was thrown away, <laughs> and he's going to come back. After he regroups, gets his strength, and reaches maturity. Because in The Lion King, Simba was in the wilderness. And Timon and Pumbaa and Rafiki with the, the sage said, Go back and claim your birthright. He said that. Mark Taylor, and I'm going to be showing that as well, folks. Mark Taylor, the false prophet, who told us about Trump, is now saying that Don Jr. is going to also have his seat. We're not done. Allison, we're not done. No. We are not done. So why did this happen, ladies and gentlemen? It happened because a large portion of the, the uh, body of Christ has been infected and polluted and ravished and been overcome, overwhelmed, poisoned with the vomit of the new apostolic reformation, NAR, Kingdom Now, Dominionist, Seven Mountain, False Apostle Prophets, workers from hell, sons of perdition, iniquity, lost leaders, false shepherds, wolves in sheep's clothing, false anointing, poisonous beasts, ravenous clouds without water, whales who want to just make a meal out of you and take everything that you have and lie to you and convince you to go into perdition and to hell with them. Nathan, you're really giving it to them. They're not stopping. The powers of darkness are not stopping, Allison. They're not. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are watching and witnessing a spiritual warfare. An operation of spiritual warfare against the church. It's not the church that's doing spiritual warfare. No, 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 no. No, it's the other side. Satan is doing spiritual warfare against the church right now. Yeah, Allison. everybody's asleep and they're arming up and fighting us in the spiritual realm. Those demons from all over the world, the ones that were in Haiti... In Jamaica, the voodoo ones from from uh, Africa. Yeah, called up by Paula White. They came. And if we go backwards, Allison, it's so amazing that we saw during the Olympic ceremony, the opening ceremony. Yeah. Remember that, folks? They recreated Glastonbury Tour on the, the field of the opening ceremony. And they had this oak tree. And the, the oak tree floated up and all these people poured out. And they represented, what were they? Demons? Demons. Yeah. Hordes. The hordes were set free to go out through the world. And we saw that happen in 2012. They announced it. Also in 2012, we had the shamans that walked around the United States to the Indian burial grounds. And, and they did their magic witchcraft sorcery to Opening open. Opening portals, right? Yeah. To let out. What did they, what came out? Yeah, that's the question. But we see what's happening here now. And then if we go back to 2008. During the Todd Bentley, Lakeland, false sliming of American churches, revival. It wasn't a revival, but we saw it happen. And Todd Bentley slimed a good portion of the Church of America because pastors, 
filled up their church vans and, and buses and cars and convoys, and they drove to Lakeland Revival, yeah. and they let that thing, who who said he got his words from Emma, I said, yeah. I'm referring to Todd Bentley, I call him a thing, because I don't know what he is, but he has Emma tattooed to his body, which is a demonic spirit entity, and he said that when he would go to his hotel room, and Emma would appear to him and tell him what to say the next night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he had a prayer line, and the people came forward, and one Everybody by one. got slimed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Bam. Bam, Bam. Bam. Did any of you folks get Bam Bammed by Todd Bentley? Guess what? Todd Bentley slimed pastors and members of the body of Christ, or actually participants in the body of Christ. I don't even know if they're real. Who went back to their churches and laid hands of impartation on their people. Mm. Spread it's everywhere. Spread like a poison. And yes. ladies and gentlemen, if you go back to Watchman's Cry, to the archives of Watchman's Cry, I said it 10 years ago when this was going on. I said those people are going to leave the Lakeland Revival and slime the people in the church and a great deception is going to slime the whole body of Christ with this NAR gospel. And now here we go. Yeah. It infected. It went out through the, out the United States. And it even infected Europe because a lot of those preachers went to Europe. And they're and NAR as well. And they, they NAR and they're setting up their NAR churches in Europe and sliming everybody there. So it's Western Christianity. The, the, the cult of Trump, is yeah. that in Germany, Allison? Oh, among Christians, yeah. There's a lot of Trump followers, a lot of Trump followers in uh, in Europe, yeah, among the Christians. Nathan, enough with Trump. Let's move forward. No, folks, Trump's not, Trump is not gone, ladies and gentlemen. Trump's just getting started. He formed the office of the former president of the United States, mm -hmm. and he's staffing it. He's giving it a presence, and that thing is becoming stronger and stronger, and it is now taking it has taken over. It just took one week of Trump being gone, and he took over the Republican Party because there's not one Republican from this point on, congressman, senator, representative on the state level or the uh, the uh, federal level or governor, state level, that will be able to run for office and get voted in without Trump's approval. Yeah. So Trump is now going to control every candidate and. The whisperings and the chatter is that Trump's going to use this newfound power to stack the House and the Senate in his favor for loyalists mm -hmm. so that when he runs in three more years, he starts campaigning again, whether it's him or Don Jr. or Eric or Ivanka, when he stacks the deck, he will have loyalists, party loyalists, to allow him to do whatever he wants. No one will vote against him ever again. And from this point on, it will be the party of Trump taking over the United States. That's the same thing Hitler did. Ellison. Yeah. The party loyalists, did the Nazis get involved in there? Did, they, did their claws get in there, immersed, their talents? Yeah, they did. And they were menacing, and they would force just by intimidation. Before Hitler ran for chancellor, was the Nazi party already influencing German problems? Oh, yeah, they were already going around. Behind the scenes? Oh, yeah. So they had a plan. They had a plan. Right now, we're seeing the same thing, folks. Whatever, if he changes the name, the Patriot Party tried to rise up and there was a tweet from Trump, I'm not going to have a part of this or be a part of this. Whether that was true or not, I don't know. But this thing's not going away. So how did we get here? Back to what I was saying. We, we are here because of the false prophet Nar liars who have slimed the church. And I'm going to show you guys something. I want to ask that you please hang in there till later on in this video because I'm going to show you something that's going to shock you. It's going to be one of the most, if, if you're a Christian, let me say this. If you are a Bible-believing, spirit-filled Christian, you will be disturbed over what I'm going to show you. Now, to lay the foundation for those of you that want to hate Nathan and hate Allison and hate Watchman's Cry, because Allison, they said Nathan's against the spiritual gifts. Yeah. He doesn't believe in, in, in the gifts and the and prophecy or tongues or any of that. Folks, I was raised Assembly of God. I cut my teeth in the Assembly of God Church. I was trained theologically at Assembly of God College. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. They are in operation. However, they're also false gifts. Yes. False Holy Spirit. False Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about that. So in many, many programs, we're going to share all these things. Now, 
moving forward. Why did we get here? How did this happen with false prophecies about Trump coming back? How did we get here? It's from the doctrine of demons. In fact, uh, Allison, let's uh, share that passage of scripture. I have the Bible here. There are two references. Actually, there's more than that. To what would happen in the end times about doctrine of demons. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, if you have your Bible, write this down if you're taking notes. Allison, go ahead and read. Okay. Go, go ahead and read uh, chapter 4, verse 1, and we'll just read through, uh, through 5. Go through ahead, five, Allison. Okay. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Okay, let's stop for a second. In the end of time, some will depart from the faith. Yeah, so they are believers. It says that they just will depart from the faith, and the faith in this context is a follower of Jesus. So at the end of time, some will depart, giving heed to deceiving spirits. Allison, how does that happen? That means that they, they think they're telling the truth. They're heeding the deception. They they really believe what they're saying. They're deceived themselves. And we read that deceived and being deceived. So they're deceived themselves and they're being deceived and then they spread deception. Yeah. So in the last days they will pay heed to deceiving spirits and what? And doctrines of demons. And isn't it interesting that the New Apostolic Reformation, Seven Mountain, Charlottesville, yeah. What do they like to say a lot? What's that word they use all the time? The new apostolic Re reformation. New. Yeah. You were telling me about this, Allison. Everything is always new. New fire, new spirit, new wine. Right. New heart. New, exactly. Exactly. And they push this new, new, new. There's going to be a new gospel come forth. Folks, if you looked into the teachings and the writings of these guys, it's scary. Because it also goes into... They want to do it themselves, and they believe that before Jesus can come back, he needs our help to fix the world in those seven areas, the seven mountains. We, we kind of touched that, but they also believe this. They believe that the time will come where they will become militant. Mm -hmm. The Phineas ministry, Joel's army, where these members, members of this movement, will be given swords by the Holy Spirit to go out and to slay the wicked. Mm -hmm. They will become assassins. It's a new crusade that's coming, a new inquisition at the end of time. That's coming, folks. That's part of the doctrine of demons. We will have Christians actually, what? be careful the term Christian, right, right Allison? Yeah. People who attend church, yeah. they will say, I'm doing God a favor. This guy that lives at this address is not for us. Therefore, they're against us. Let's get our buddies to go over there because we have the Phineas ministry to get rid of those who are against the movements of the people of Israel that are awaiting their promise, the promised land. It's going to get ugly. Mm -hmm. When Jesus said, brother against brother, he wasn't just talking about words. The sword will come between the households. And that doctrine of demons wants the body of Christ to slay one another. And unfortunately, folks, the civil war in the body of Christ is coming. It's already started. Mm -hmm. Doctrines of demons are behind pulpits. The doctrine of demons are being spit out and vomited out on YouTube right now. We are watching the fulfillment of the Bible. And it says in Revelation, still they would not repent. And right now, okay, right now, what are we talking about? The false prophets who lied to everybody and said that Trump was going to come. And then he didn't. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show probably eight to ten video clips of these NAR prophets making excuses for their prophecies about Trump serving a second term not coming true. And I want to just show you how they backpedal and they want, will not repent. Why? Why would they not repent? There's a variety of reasons, but we just read that uh, they will be immersed with doctrines you know, of demons. demons, paying heed to seducing spirits. Mm -hmm. So uh, this clip comes from Steve Schultz. Steve Schultz is the one who has the Elijah list, Allison? Yeah. Uh, the Elijah list. They're a website that will place, they post prophe prophecies from everybody. From everybody, yeah. They're not checked. They're not oh. vetted. They're not. There's so many false voices. Have you there. read that? Have you been there before? Oh, yeah. 
in the beginning of my walk with God, I would go to the Elijah list sometimes, but there was always something in my spirit that said no. No. <laughs> no. 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 Okay, so Steve Schultz runs the Elijah list, and he has a YouTube channel with these guys, these non mm -hmm. And he has, from time to time, Kat Kerr. Allison, who's Kat Kerr? The lady with the pink hair. Yeah. She has a lot of so-called stories of her visiting heaven all the time and seeing all of these crazy things going on in heaven. And Nowhere in the Bible does it say prophets have to apologize for anything. You'll not ever hear me apologize for what God has said to me. I will stand and I will still believe what God said would happen and it will happen. So if they give a false prophecy and they're completely wrong, they don't have to apologize? No. Uh -huh. Not according to her. Okay. And the Bible doesn't say that. So ladies and gentlemen, if one of these people who are being seduced by these spirits, who operate by doctrines of demons, make a boo-boo, they don't have to apologize. No. Wow. And still, they would not... What does Revelation say, Allison? They would not repent. Which she just showed us. That's very prideful to say something. Okay, and then there's this other gentleman who's a part of the NAR movement. Kat Kerr said they don't have to apologize. Let's listen to this one, Allison. Check this out. Excuses, excuses, back to the Garden of Eden. Here we go, folks. I got full-grown pastors, okay? Full-grown adult men sending me text messages sending me inbox messages asking me when I'm going to repent and resign my church because I said Trump was going to win the election and Trump didn't win. Let me tell you something. Trump won by landslide, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I'm almost ashamed of these pastors and preachers and prophets that say, well, I'm going to have to apologize. No, you ain't got to apologize for nothing. He won single-handedly, hands down, biggest historical landslide. That's a factual deal, ladies and gentlemen. The man won. I ain't apologizing to nobody for what I know in my spirit to be true. Let's pause it for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Is that the fire of God coming out of them? Oh, yeah. That's a false fire coming out. Trump won by a landslide. Okay, winning also includes a, a, a thing taking place on January the 20th. Putting your hand on the Bible and swearing an oath. And being, to the, right? Being, getting sworn into office. So you can twist this and say that he won, but he's not the president right now. He's not. Biden is the president. Yeah. Whether we like it or not, folks, Harris is the vice president. Where, whether we like it or not, but this guy's saying there's no need to apologize. So now we have, we're establishing a trend here, a pattern mm -hmm. from these NAR prophets. So God lied? God made a mistake? Ladies and gentlemen, does God lie? <laughs> well, Nathan, he did win. I mean, technically. No, let's not pretend who won the seat in the office and who's there. Biden's in there. Yeah. How did we get here, ladies and gentlemen? It's because of lies. It's because the church has now been slimed by the doctrines of demons. And there's also several other things that are going on. And I'm going to just name them real quick. Because in the following programs, the sessions that we have, we're going to talk about all of these things. But let me just go down the list right here. Doctrines of demons is number one. That's why we're in this mess. The pastors, they're not warning. They're not warning. It's all just good, nice, sweet messages tickling the ears of their audiences, of their sheep. They're not warning. Not warning them of the time that we're in, not equipping them how to deal with deception. Amen. And Allison, what's the other thing those NAR folks do, those charismatics, every year on January 1st? What, what do we hear from their proclamation for the year? How do they word it? Folks, you know what I'm talking about, right? At the beginning of every year, so is this the Lord... This year is going to be a change, and God is going to... Open doors and 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 glory is coming, coming and, and put, this is the year of set your enemies beneath your feet and it's always good. And when you think about it, Allison, how can you generalize for every Christian? Right. You know who else does that? What other tool of Satan does that? It's in the newspaper every day, folks. If you still get the newspaper, or they used to have it, you turn to that section. We'll see a. 
I'm going to get that husband I'm looking for or that boyfriend, or that job, or that I'm going to find that treasure. And they go to that horoscope and, and people will read, which is actually one twelfth of the population. One twelfth of the population has the same thing for, going on in their lives. For that day. For that day. Today you will meet someone new. So everyone born in December, Capricorn, you, you're going to have whatever. Yeah. That's the same thing they're doing. They're doing sorcery, ladies and gentlemen. They're doing fortune cookies made and built for the church yeah words that are flowery and words that lie so we have these pastors that are not warning and not telling people what time it is ladies and gentlemen the delusion is here so how do we fight it that's going to take several shows as well allison and i have been looking over notes we had a bible study privately yesterday about mm -hmm. this there's a lot right oh, allison yeah. it's going to take yeah. i mean we're going to have to get deep into the word to touch all of this this false anointing that is coming to the church in America, and it's actually all over the world. It's in Germany. It is. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's everywhere. To the Western church, especially. Yeah. The NAR anointing seeks after signs. And Jesus said that they will seek after a sign. And because they want signs and wonders, they're going to be deceived with false signs and wonders and false fire. The Bible tells us in Revelation that strange fire will come down. Yeah. And it's happening now. And how interesting is it that Todd Bentley, one of the, the trailblazers of this movement, 12 years ago, actually called, his ministry is called Fresh Fire. Fresh Fire. Fresh Fire. <laughs> Lord, I pray right now like a machine gun, light them up with Holy Ghost Fire! Jesus, a brand new hip. Bam, 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 bam. This is 10, 12 years ago. They would start having epileptic fits. Yes! You ready? Or, or they would say fire. Yeah. And you have these these uh, nar prophets who would lay hands on people, and they weren't saying in the name of Jesus. They would say fire. Just fire, fire, and these people were actually burning. It seems they started burning. They started having fits. And uh, Allison, I don't know how else to communicate how bad this is than to show the people. But in showing them, it's going to be so disturbing. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to do this. Now, if you're a mature Christian and you're covered by the blood, you should be okay. But if you're not covered by the blood of Jesus, when you see this next clip, it there's a creepy factor to it. So I'm going to say a prayer that everyone who sees it will, will, will see this for the express purpose of knowledge, mm -hmm. of exposing the lying prophets. Yeah. That's why I'm doing this. So, Allison, I'm, I'm taking Allison's hand. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say a prayer, ladies and gentlemen, for you to be covered as you watch this. But it is so important to, <laughs> to show you this. And here we go. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I would pray that you would protect us, protect our eyes, protect our spirits, our mind, our will, our emotions, protect our lives, and encamp your angels around us, Lord. Let your blood cover us with your shield, shield of faith. Let us not be hurt at all God as we look at this and for everyone watching let them not take anything away that is not of you as they watch this let the enemy not slime them at all God but let them see how the enemy works so that they can then know that this is alive and well here to warn them in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen ladies and gentlemen the prophets of Baal are here and Allison read that verse seducing spirits with doctrines of demons um, Allison, I'm going to go ahead and start now. And this clip was recorded by a, a, I'm not sure who released it, but someone filmed it in their church and then they gave it to a pastor on YouTube and the channel's gone now. You can't even find the channel. But I was able to grab this 12 years ago and I have it in my archives. And I want to share it with you because this is an illustration of what Satan is doing in the church right now. These prophets who you saw laying hands on Trump imparting wisdom on Trump, God's anointing on Trump, 
by the way, that's another thing. Impartation is a very, very sacred thing that must be guarded. It's uh, one of the things that does, it's a practice in the church, but it's also a discipline that must be guarded and used only through biblical means. The Bible is very specific. You lay hands on no one suddenly. Do not let anyone touch you. Know those that labor among you. It's very, very precise. Mm -hmm. But the Nar prophets have been using impartation to slime one another. Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right, so this is the fire anointing. You can hear the people howling. Now look at these people in the back, Allison. The, the way they're rocking. This is not the peace of God. The peace of the... This is not a comforter for me. They're in distress. And yeah, did you hear that? The evangelists are saying fire. My goodness. Do you hear a scream? He's laying hands on someone at the front. It's like they're in pain. Look at this guy in the back. Like he's a crazy hospital. Yeah. This looks like one of those psych wards. Good. And this other guy keeps running, rubbing his head. Yeah. It's like they they have things crawling on them. They're screaming. It's like it's hellish. It sounds like, Allison, you said that yesterday. It sounds like. It sounds like, like screams hell. from hell. Right? They're being oh. tormented by demons. God have mercy on these. Every one of these people have been slimed. They need deliverance if they haven't gotten or uh, received it already. But now, of course, this clip is ten years old. My goodness, this is not the comforter. This is not peace of God. What is he rub? What is he doing? Right. In the name of Jesus, Lord, protect us from this. But God, yes. ladies and gentlemen, look what this guy does. He, he, they go down under the impartation. If God tells you to do something, do it. What, what, what is that? They're on fire. This is the Kundalini yeah. Satan satanic demons. These are demons inside the people, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This is Eastern occult demonic stuff. These people are not worshiping God. No. Now, this clip is we're coming to the end pretty soon. And uh You're going to see something, ladies and gentlemen, that is just... Scary. Allison, this is disturbing. disturbing this is... and scary. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the NAR. This is the NAR ministry. This is Bethel. This is Morningstar. This is Rick Joyner Morningstar. This is IHOP. This is New Apostolic Reformation. Because they believe in following science yeah science and experiences and yeah. Yeah. you know if you go to church and all it is is about experiencing stuff and oh, man, this is horrible okay this lady right here is this the one Allison? yeah I think that's the one. okay this lady right here is already being infested by the demons they're going to walk up to her and just lay that prayer cloth of mm -hmm. demon impartation and look what happens. This, this is the... This is scary. It's so bad. God have mercy on this lady. Man. Folks. Poison in the church. Yeah. Poison in the church right now. And we have to speak against this. Nathan, why do you do this? This is why. Now look at this. He's laying the cloth on her, the pastor, the demon pastor. Now look fire. at this. Look at that. Now she's having a fit. She's the demon's driving. Are in, and she's on fire. Look what she starts doing. She's on fire. Her body's burning. Oh my goodness. Look at this. 
look at this. It's like an insane asylum. She's trying to get comfort. She's trying to make the leave. She yeah. runs into the wall, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. She ran into the wall. Oh, Allison. She's on fire. She oh, feels man. the fire. My Lord, my Lord. Oh, Jesus have mercy. This is... Complete this phrase. Poor people. Got slimed. Terrible. Do you feel like you need to take a shower after this? I don't know. I don't know. I have words. This is just... Ugh. You know, every time I've seen this for ten years, and I parked it for a few years, and then I saw all this was going on, and I knew that we had to do this. I was, and we had to expose these these people, these nar, fake fire, strange fire prophets, strange and fire. this is what they're doing. They're polluting God's sheep, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's going on. This false anointing is in the church, and there's another passage of scripture that I'm going to have Allison read, and it's found in Second Timothy four. So the first one was 1 Timothy 4, and the next one that we're reading here is 2 Timothy 4. So both Timothys in chapter 4, if you forget, talk about these, the, these demons infecting the church with lying doctrine. Verse 3, 4, chapter 3. Okay. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap upon themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth, and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Okay, so he's telling Timothy, be watchful of all in all things. Now, folks, Paul is admonishing Timothy, but this is an admonishment for all of us. Be watchful in all things. Mm -hmm. All things. Allison, yeah. we get emails. They say, Concentrate on, on this one thing. Just talk about the goodness of God and the blessings. And but that's not the that's not all picture. things. That's not all things. Is that we're told all things. All things. And see, all things are mentioned right after these seducing spirits, itching ears, yeah. lying teachers, ladies and gentlemen. Fables. Following fables. So be watchful in all things, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're doing right now. Mm. We're doing what God tells us to do, and it's the same thing you should be doing. It's the same thing every MAGA supporter should be doing. They should be watchful in all things. To see if what they're witnessing matches and lines up with with what we know to be true. So, in the last days, the time will come, they will not endure sound doctrine. So, what are they going to endure? False doctrine. False doctrine. Lying doctrine. Doctrines of demons, as you read earlier, Alice. The doctrines of demons involve sorcery. Baal worship involves sorcery. Eastern religion involves sorcery and esoteric arts and when we look at the sorcery that satan uses you know in some big cities ellison you can go into the shady part of town and there's a sign with a hand on it yeah and you know madam what's her name whoever Zelda. <laughs> yeah well i'll read your palm yeah fortune's told so sorcery is palm reading yeah there's another one tea leaves Tea leaves, like, yeah, all that. What, what are some of the other things that they do to read futures uh, that you've encountered over the years? Oh. I mean, well, of course, no one would mess with the Ouija board, right, Allison? Oh, no, of course not. We don't look at Ouija boards because Ouija boards are getting numbers and, and words and letters off of a board and channeling. But they spirits. do channeling. They do a lot of so-called healing and light work and reiki and it says that even satan can operate as an angel of light so demonic prophetic words demonic visions okay you just mentioned one allison you said demonic prophetic words meaning they're prophetic words and we're being told they're from jesus mm -hmm. from the holy ghost but they're actually yeah. what they're demonic they're from the devil okay so wh where should we get our truth from from those esoteric tools or from... No, from the Word of God. And, and who else? From the Holy Spirit. Okay, and Jesus said, and, and this is in John 16. I'm going to just read this. I tell you the truth, it's your advantage that I go away. If I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. 
And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment of sin. That's that poking, hey. Yeah. And if we have our conscience with him, we'll be able to hear him. We'll hear him. And then it says, I still have many things to say to you. Can't bear them right now. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. And he will tell you things to come. Things to come. So, if we want to know what's coming in the days ahead, in our future, who tells us? The Holy Spirit. Or esoteric tools? No. Ladies and gentlemen, let's establish. I'm saying this for a reason because I'm about to show you something. The NAR prophets have incorporated esoteric tools to help them prophesy. Mm -hmm. And Mark Taylor said that when he wrote his prophecy about Trump, he saw a horse race. And the horse that ran was, and I don't even remember the name of it, but part of his confirmation was from a horse race. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you another gentleman right here. And this gentleman is part of the NAR deception, who's listening to these demonic creatures, and he has a church. Watch this. Here we go. It was 52 to 24. But what was amazing, I looked on the screen... And they, they listed Ohio State score first, and then they listed the, the score of Alabama Crimson Tide. And then actually when I looked in the morning on, I think, ESPN, they did it the same way. seems unusual. Usually you put the team with the higher score first and the other score afterwards. But the way that looks and the way it came out, I'll put this up right now. It was a 24 can you see that okay, Steve? Yeah, you see that. I see that. 24, wow. 52, and then right in the middle of that is kind of covert a 45. So it's a 45 with a two on either side. And I went, oh, I kind of went that even as I was watching it. There is wow. it, two terms. 45 was not put in there for one term. He was put in there for two terms. It's a confirmation on either side. There's a two on either side. Amazing. What 22 means as well. We won't, you know, we don't, we don't want to dizzy people with numbers. But the 45 was there right in the middle. And so that was another confirmation. The Lord saying, I'm putting Trump in a second term. And it's not later. It's wow. back to back. It's right now. It's part of the crimson tide that's coming in. No, God well, did not say the that. The Lord said. Sure. So my, I looked into my tea leaves. And my tea leaves were laying out in a certain way. And then the Lord told me this is this and that. This is new age. Good night. It was like, I can start casting my runes and the Lord will talk to me, speak to me through the runes, right? In hypocrisies, telling each other lies. That's what we heard, right? That's what the Bible said. Mm -hmm. In hypocrisy. Yes. They will lie. Yes. Okay, so one of the things that has been established by the NAR and by Christians and MAGA people, and they even have told me, do not criticize Trump because God put him in there. Yeah. And if he's in office, he's God's man, so say nothing because God put him in there. I am not required by God to accept something and submit to something that I know is demonic and fraudulent. You hear that? You heard that from your pastor. He is not my president and never will be. And I'll release with the authority God has given me as a prophetic voice. I will say... Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are prohibited from the presidential seat of the United States of America. And I say that through prophetic authority that he has given to me, whatever level. And I also say that Donald J. Trump will still be the president of the United States of America. It doesn't matter if there are zero pathways. The pathway is the word of the Lord. He said it. He confirmed it. He confirmed it through multiple uh, individuals, you keep having one after another after another come on there, and they were taken to heaven. They saw something. Jesus says it. We believe it. It's time to hang on the word that he spoke, and that's the pathway. Right. President-elect, my hind leg. That's the dumbest thing. They made that nonsense up. Ain't no such thing as president-elect office. That is stupid. Donald Trump is the president and will be the president for the next four years. And if that upsets you, then when we pray, you can slip out because you walked into the wrong house tonight, okay? I'm telling you, that is ridiculous. President-elect, my hind leg. That, that guy is never going to be the president of the United States, okay? I'm telling you, God's about to do something, folks. Yeah, okay. the wrong house, all right.
if we disagree, we're in the wrong house. Yeah. If we don't follow their doctrines of demons, we're in the wrong house and we can slip out. Thank you for. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You know, ladies and gentlemen, if you're attending one of these Yahoo churches, you need to just pack up and never go back. Have nothing to do with these guys. Or if you're subscribed to them on YouTube or you follow their ministries or you contribute to them and support them financially, you're supporting these lies. Yeah. Plain and simple, Allison. Plain and simple. You're supporting doctrines of demons. Uh, Daniels, the, the porn star. Oh. Uh, Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels. Had an affair with him. And there's enough paper trail. Mm -hmm. We have Trump's lawyer admitting he paid her. We know this. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Think about the accusations that came against him regarding the porn whatever she was. That never panned out. He's still standing. In every single case, God has shown last minute that he pulled the trump card of victory. Having, having something to do with paying some Stormy Daniels woman 130000 I mean, which is going to turn out to be perfectly legal. That money was not campaign money. Sorry, I'm giving you a fact now that you don't know. It's not campaign money. No campaign finance violation. So, so they, they funneled it through the law firm. Funneled through the law firm, and the president repaid it. Okay, uh, now let's go to Mr. Mark Taylor. What does Mark think about what happened? Is he backpedaling, Ellison, because his prophecy said, in fact, he... Well, let's just go see what he has to say. Here we go. Listen to this, folks. I know Biden's not going to win it. Trump is going to win it. It's just a matter of what the Democrats are going to pull on that night to prolong it. So that's the only thing we have to be praying about, guys. We know Trump's going to win this. Uh, I think he's going to win it by a huge margin. You know, uh, if, if, you know, look, I think California's even going to go red, brother. The Democrats are not going to win for decades to come. You're not going to see another Democrat in the White House for decades, I don't believe, if ever again, right now at this point, because they are literally, you're seeing literally the, the destruction of the Democratic Party. Uh, look, it doesn't matter who runs up against Trump. It doesn't matter because they're going to lose, period. Trump's going to win the election. It's going to be a blowout in 2020. We all know it. Look, when, when this is all said and done, the Democrats will be finished for good. And I've said this for a long time. I said that you will not see another Democrat in the White House for many, many years, if ever again. And this right here, I believe, which we're seeing happening, which is the death of the Democratic Party, this right there will be uh, that prophecy coming to pass. None of these guys have a chance. <laughs> Look what happened again today. We set records on the stock market, Chris. Yes, we did, Mark. And there, there's nothing that's going to stand in the way of Donald Trump getting reelected at this point because I, we've been saying it for a long time now that by the time he gets to Election Day on the second term, Everything's going to be so good. The economy, jobs, our military, I mean, you name it, man. Our, our trade, energy. I mean, look at the energy's booming right now, man. We, you know, we're almost energy independent. We're number one in the, in, in the world right now. So, I mean, all these things, when they begin to come together, there's no way anybody's going to vote for a Democrat. And I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. There will not be another Democrat in the White House for many, many years, if ever again, you're seeing the death of the Democratic Party. Look, President Trump is anointed and appointed by God, and he's not going anywhere. He's not going to be impeached. He's not going to be removed from office. He will be there for two terms, period. What God has shown me is that he will be in for two terms, period. Mm -hmm. And I can even add to that now a little <laughs> bit because God has shown me again that there will be another Trump in the White House. Oh, really? After Donald Trump. Another Trump in the White House? What? What's he God saying? God shown? Yeah. Mark Taylor's boom, prosperity boom prophecy. Did that, not happen. Didn't happen, folks. Nope. And if that one didn't happen, and then he said we would go out and, and plunder the whole world of the oil and bring it all back and, and be stronger than we've ever been, we'll get our power back. Did that happen? Nope. Didn't happen, folks. The Johnson Amendment's not gone, by the way. Obamacare has not been replaced by something that Trump promised. That's not happened. Nope. The wall's already been stopped. Folks, Mark Taylor lied. 
doctrines of demons. We saw it then. And yeah, and his if, insistence, Allison. And if he didn't lie on purpose, he believed lying spirits that were speaking to him. Well, what about Kat Kerr, the Pete lady? Oh, wow. I have another clip, Allison. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear her. Let's hear what she has to say. Here we go. Nor will they be successful to prevent Trump from winning. He will win. He will win in a landslide. And yes, whether you believe it or not, God is on his side. God is very aware and he has a plan. And he's going to work that plan. And he has still uh, chosen Trump to be our president for the next four years. So he will win the elections this year. He's going to win. Trust me. God is adamant about Trump winning. By the way, you still need to vote. Yes. Make sure you plan to vote. Your vote will count. But this is the thing. I have heard from, from God himself. Trump will win. I actually have right here because I was there on inaugural day. There's my inauguration cup. There's, there's President Trump. And there is Pence right there. Who, by the way, you know, will be our next president after President Trump. <laughs> and I will tell you what God said. They will not be successful and they will lose again and Come again on. and again. And especially in the election, they're going to lose big time because he is going to make sure that Trump gets reelected because he's not done with him either. In heaven, they're rooting for him. I don't know what earth people think about. Heaven knows that God picked him. And what he's already done for this country proves that God picked him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he's going to win in 2020, in case you wonder. Yeah. Write it down. Write it down. It's going to happen. People listen to her prophecies all the time. Get a false sense of security with what she says. You know, there, there just has to be a little bit of leaven in it. You can have a lot of truth and just a little bit of leaven in it, and it's still false. It's going to make everything false. How do people believe this, Alice? I, I don't know. How, how do they? And this wow. has nothing to do with her pink hair, okay? If you want to dye your hair pink, go ahead. Okay, the hair is cool. I, I, that's know, fine with me. I think it's kind of cool, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the pink hair, but just her attitude. She's so yeah. stubborn. Yeah. And she's so patriotic, and if she's a prophetess... Why is she wearing a flag as right? a cape? Because the kingdom of God is America, right? Because we're supposed to be of this world. <laughs> yeah, and Jesus is returning to claim America and restore America Man, to his greatness. This, this, these are the names, ladies and gentlemen. These are the people. The embarrassment is so obvious now. Here we go. Every single prophet has said that Donald Trump is going to win. God spoke to me. All right, what's going to happen in 2020? I think President Trump is going to be reelected handily. Uh, I think he will win the election uh, without any question. Donald Trump is going to win this election, and it's going to be a red tsunami. And yeah, we're going to take the House. And I know it's topsy-turvy in the Senate, but I'm telling you, we're going to take the Senate as well. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that President Trump will have a second term. I am speaking from the future. Yes, you at are. This moment. Right this moment. And I am going to proclaim yes. that President Trump will be President <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I agree I with that. I am going to proclaim that the Republicans will take the Senate and the House. I'm telling you that President Trump is going to triumph in 2020. God is going to shake this nation. The Lord brought that man to office for a purpose and a plan. He was set there by God's divine hand. He will not be removed. And I believe, as those prophets have said, and the Holy Spirit has revealed to me too, I believe, that Donald Trump is going to be reelected president in the United States, and he'll be reelected, I believe, in a landslide. No matter what the politics say, no matter what's going on, we believe that this president shall be reelected. I prophesied that to you some years back in 2020.
Didn't God <laughs> show you who's going to win the election? Yes, if, he did. If believers, and I know it's always if believers pray. Right. But he showed me three times in a dream, and I showed this first time. There's a clip that was made here. I dreamed that Donald Trump got reelected. Um, there's no guessing games. He is the one that God's going to put his hands on. I think he's going to win again by landslide some kind of landslide. It could be an electoral landslide, but it's going to be a landslide. I said, Lord, Joe Biden don't need to be president. And just like this, just like if you'd answered me, he said, he won't. Just like that. <laughs> he said, he won't. What? They all believe that they heard from Allison, the Holy Spirit. Over and over. We saw over and over these prophets, and they're attributing their knowledge to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Deception is rampant. I mean, absolutely rampant. There's so much deception going on, and people are believing they're actually hearing from God. Allison, think about this. These people have churches. Yeah. They have people under them. Yeah. Who listen to them. Yeah. And they're not all baby <sighs> Christians either. They're not. Some of these people, or most of them, have been walking with God for years and years. Ladies and gentlemen, are you surprised so far about what we're showing? This is what time it is. So, for some of you folks who are on the Trump train, on the MAGA train, this is what's fueling it. The NAR, New Kingdom Now, New Apostolic Reformation, these false prophets are pumping the church with this knowledge, or this desire false knowledge oh. with a desire for trump to be in office and so the question must be asked why are they so adamant about it Allison? why do they want him in office so bad because they don't want judgment they don't know what time it is they want to get out of jail quick card they, they do they really believe trump's going to do all those things that they that he's he already has proven folks he had four years and he didn't do it no doesn't love you guys. He doesn't. Folks, he is not your friend. He's a showman. He's an actor. He's an imposter. He's a faker. And he, he's, oh man, he fits the narrative of the son of perdition. And some of you might say, well, Nathan, come on, he's not president now. How can he be the candidate? He's still on the table, folks, because unless he has no ability to run again, then I'll take him off the table. But until that happens, where he can no longer run, I'm going to leave him on the table because these things are happening before our eyes. And also we have this. Now that Mark Taylor brought it out, here's the meme right here, folks. Here's the meme from Don Jr. Look at that, Allison. Folks, remember Mufasa? Yeah. Why is it orange? Is that the orange continues on after <laughs> daddy's gone? So I just want to leave you with this, ladies and gentlemen. We're in a mess. The church is in disarray. There is so much wrong with the body of Christ right now. There's so much. The American church especially. The Western church is the church of Laodicea, and they are deluded because they tolerate the woman Jezebel who is seducing them. Now, in the next program, we're going to go into how false prophets succumb. How do, how do you get a person who's sincere? Starts out with God, and they're sincere, and they love him, and then over time, they turn into a... Witch of Endor, um, Madam Zelda. How do they go from sincere to non-sincere? The Bible tells us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to disclose that. We're going to look under the hood. We're going to look at the anatomy of false prophets. How do they do it? How does the church get deceived? How does this, this sliming happen? What takes place behind the scenes? What takes place in the minds of people? Mm -hmm. How does the deception whisper to them? And this thing is so huge, folks. So we're going to talk about how deception comes in the body in the soul, and in the spirit. Mm -hmm. We have to. Yeah. We have to break it down and we have to explain it. So it's not going away, folks. We're there. The great delusion is here. Well, Nathan, what about Biden being there? Biden's there for temporary. Harris is there temporary. And what this is going to do is it's going to galvanize and ensure that the right, the patriots, the MAGA supporters, the Trump supporters will dig in their heels even more. Um, when they see all the crazy stuff Biden's doing, it's going to foment them it's going to give them the fuel the, the gasoline fuel. yeah it's going to pour gasoline on their their anger on the fire that's in their bones to bring about 
the other side. Yeah. This is why we need an authoritarian. This is why we need to make the Democrats uh, outlaws. Look what they did. So Biden is has, was put in there temporarily to anger everyone and to get the people to run to Trump. And see, ladies and gentlemen, that's what they're doing. It's the Hag Hegelian dialectic. You got to pick one of the two. But what are you offering, Nathan? What do we offer, Allison? Is there a third choice besides the Republicans and the Democrats for politics? Yeah. Yeah, the kingdom of God. The king of kings. Jesus. The king of kings, Jesus. Amen. And he will come and put the nations in subjection mm -hmm. under his feet. That's what's coming, folks. Yep. But we have to endure. You need to endure. You need to overcome. And the lies are going to get even thicker. They're going to get stronger. They're going to get darker. They're going to be so convincing, Allison, that the people will not know. Even if possible. Yeah. How did Jesus say it? Yeah. If it were possible. That verse has always bothered me. But it's scary. The elect, right? Even the elect would be deceived. We're seeing it right now in real yeah. time. And it's so much damage done to the body of Christ. Allison, do you hate Trump? No. I don't hate Trump. Do I hate Trump? No. Do we hate those false prophets? No, we don't hate them, but you know, no. being careful and being watchful, watch watchful. all things, like Paul said, watch yeah. all things. And, Be watchful in all things. Yeah, and and testing the spirits. You guys, you see what kind of spirit is behind this now, don't you? It's a lying, deceiving, false Amen. Holy Spirit. And it's grabbing a hold of, of Christians, not unbelievers. Christians. Christians, Allison. And uh, on one of the future programs, we're going to talk about how it has even infected families. Oh, we have to. Yeah, Allison, we we're, have we're going to have to touch it. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of listeners, people watching right now, who have broken fellowship with their family members because of this mess. And they see this. They grieve. They lament. They cry. And folks, some of you have done this. You, you've written. You've told me. You've told us. Yeah. The great divide is here. And yeah, the sword came. But look how it came. We're in a mess, folks. So we have to be on guard. We have to know. We have to understand. We have to rightly divide yeah. and be able to do it. It's a skill. And uh, I'm going to finish with this. Mm -hmm. So with that, we're going to be going. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to make an appeal to you, though. Allison and I are committed to bringing you these truths. And we work hard. We're studying on the side. When you don't see us, we're we're digging. It's a full time job. We're digging and we're digging and we're digging <laughs> and we're day. looking and we want to bring you truth. We want to rightly divide. We want to show you what the others aren't showing you. We want to show you what those YouTube commandos, the YouTube confused ones, those who have been infiltrated by the not sound doctrine, mm -hmm. doctrines of demons, patriotic doctrine, etc. We want to bring you the truth. So we, I, I want to just ask you to remember us in your prayers. And in your support. We need your support, folks. The uh, support is not really where it should be. And there's some things that we want to do. We want to... Um, we have some plans for the program, for the show. We want to be able to do events and live streaming. Mm -hmm. We want to have church services. And we're yes. getting all that ready. But we have to invest in equipment. We need cameras and uh, some things to make that possible. As well as just our provision to continue on. So uh, help us do that, folks. And uh, I just want to ask that you guys would just make it a matter of prayer. And if you see value in what we're doing, if you see that we're actually helping the body of Christ to come out from among them, then uh, we appreciate your support. Our address is, there it is on the screen, Watchman's Cry, P.O. Box 157, Priest River, Idaho, Idaho, 83856. Or you can go to the website at watchmanscry.com. And there's a PayPal link or even Zelle. So, uh, be sure to like. Yes. Be sure to like. Be sure to subscribe. And your friends, right? And Tell to your friends. share. Tell your friends, folks. I know this was long. Ladies and gentlemen, some people wrote and they said, keep it under five minutes. Keep it to eight or ten. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to get into all truth, we can't do it the TikTok way. No. This isn't low sensitivity where people are in the microwave way of thinking. You know, that new millennial desensitized comprehensive lack of comprehension we're not doing that folks we're if not we're, giving you junk food right meat takes a while to yeah. chew we're not giving you microwave uh tv dinners exactly thank you Allison. <laughs> exactly 
We're right? giving you a feast of the word. Amen. Steak, <laughs> T-bone. You need, you need, you need uh, the steak knife for these programs. So share this program and be looking for the next one. Again, ladies and gentlemen, share this. Let's get it all over the place. Share it on Facebook. Share it with your MAGA friends. Help us turn this ministry into one that is awakening. A lot of those folks coming out of the Trump misleading, the Trump confusion, because they need to be helped. Yeah. They need to be shown the way. All right, folks? So we love you. Love you. And I have this one thing, one yeah. request, guys. If there's one prayer that you need right now in these times is pray for discernment. Amen. Pray for discernment, that God will give you the spirit of discernment. It's so important. Amen. Thank you, Allison. And yeah, and it's simple, right? Just pray. Yeah. God, help me to see. Give me the eyes to see. Do your eye, eye salve on me. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Jesus hinted at that so many times. He is. He can do it on us. Yeah. All right. So with that, we'll be going. We love you. We love you, folks. And still, so uh, stay vigilant. Stay discerning. Yeah. Dig into the Bible. Pray for your families. Yeah. Warn your loved ones. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.